Good morning and welcome to our service this Sunday, the 10th of January. service um, as we continue to welcome the revelation that is Jesus the light of the world we come from scattered lives to meet with God let us recognize his presence with us as we come I'm going to continue to follow the P-R-A-Y model we're going to pause now together and we keep silence for a moment As God's people, we are gathered. Your part to join with me is in the yellow type. Let us worship him together. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. All is open and laid bare before his, the eyes of him, to him who gives account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and you give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in our pause. As we pause, we pause to listen to the words of the psalm. And this is from the end of this psalm for today. The Lord rules on his throne. King of the flood forever. Pray that the Lord will make us strong and give us peace. All you angels in heaven, honour the glory and power of the Lord. Honour the wonderful name of the Lord and worship the Lord most holy and glorious. The voice of the Lord echoes over the oceans. The glorious Lord thunders above the roar of the raging sea and the, his voice is mighty and marvellous. The voice of the Lord destroys the cedar trees. The Lord shatters the cedars on Mount Lebanon. The Lord makes Mount Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon jump like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord makes lightning flash, and the desert tremble. And because of the Lord, the desert near Kadesh shiver and shake. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth before her time. Forests are stripped of leaves, and the temple is filled with shouts of praise. The Lord rules on his throne, King of the flood forever. Pray that the Lord will make us strong and give us peace. Amen. We now turn to rejoice 
in song, and we begin with a well-known hymn, and I will continue in, in two other hymns, songs as well.
Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To be glory and praise forever, you gave Christ as the light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvelous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The prayer for this Sunday. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you to Elsie, who's going to read our Gospel reading. A reading from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So we have John, the voice in the wilderness. I think we often have an old-fashioned idea of the voice, and this is the closest I could get to an old-fashioned gramophone in these times. The voice of John was talking into the wilderness of the Galilean this desert, but he talks into the wilderness, the challenging times we face today. But it is a voice who would have us hear and have us look up and to follow. And it is a voice that speaks to us to turn back to God. John, who was unusual to say the least, was a signpost in voice and in action and in deed to God, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is one of the few occasions in the Bible where we see all three parts of the Trinity, all three of the Trinity together. And John baptizes people as they lay aside their old lives and go down in the water and come up anew and have turned back to God's ways and to turn back to God's will and to turn back to God's wisdom. Repentance means, after all, turning back to God. But let us reflect for a moment on these times.
indeed we don't have to be alone. John called those in the wilderness then as he calls us now to receive God and to receive his voice. There I have a picture. I didn't have a picture of the River Jordan, so I did the next best thing, the River Urn, as it tries to flow into the sea there at Ballyshannon. So let us now listen to what John heard and what Jesus heard and what we now hear. You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased and delighted. We listen to the voice of the Father. John pointed to Jesus. He said he was not even worthy to tie the sandals of Jesus. But he was pointing us to the Lord, God with us, Jesus. As Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. And the Father pointed to the Son in voice. So we've seen that the Lord Jesus is the way. We've heard that the Lord Jesus is the way. And we now look to him and taste and see that he is good. Jesus was baptized, and many of us are baptized. But I think some of us forget the original foundations of what it meant to be baptized. It comes from the word baptizo, to plunge, to immerse, to wash, to be overwhelmed, even overwhelmed in trouble. It was usually reserved for those who were Gentiles and turning to Judaism called proselytes, and they washed away their old life because for Jews, the cleansing of the dirtiness of sin needs to be washed away. Jesus did not need to be baptized. He was already Jewish. He did not need to wash away sin because he is perfect. Yes, he did so. He did so as a symbol, a sign of what we are called to do in his way. And he he is the most perfect example of what it means to be human and to obey God. He always did his Father's will. He always followed what was needed of him. So he laid down his whole life, if you will, not just already at the cross, but there in the, in the river in Jordan. He, you remember, was in the family business of carpentry and building. He laid down his life in that. He laid down his life in Capernaum and all that was of that. And from that moment on, he took up what God the Father called of him. And the Father recognized that this Jesus is the anointed one. And as he came up out of this, the water, the Spirit descended on and into him and confirmed in him that which what he was to do. And he, the name Messiah, Christ, means the anointed one. So imagine, if you will, if you were at that river and you had come to Jordan because you'd heard of this John and you'd said, yes, I want to take God seriously. And you had been baptized by water as John had. Then you see Jesus and you see him go under the water and up out of the water as you have done. And then you hear the voice of heaven, and then the Spirit descends like a dove. You would indeed know, as Jesus later said of himself, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then Jesus went out into the wilderness and was tested before he then went into his ministry. He felt the 40 days in the wilderness. And as I said, most of us are baptized by water, but the Bible reminds us in our prayer and here and in other places, we're to be born not just of water, but also of the Spirit. Jesus, as I said, is the way, the truth, and the life. To follow Jesus and to follow in God's ways is not easy, especially in these times. We need both the guidance, the capability, and the power to do so. And thankfully, God has indeed given us that. He sent us the Holy Spirit that all who turn to Jesus and say yes to him as the way and truth and life, as John has pointed to, that he would give to us the Holy Spirit. Some of us have received that, and some of us perhaps have been more reticent. So now as we have paused and rejoiced and reflected on 
who this Jesus is, the light of the world. This is why I have the candles beside me, reminding us of the light in these dark times. We have, in our mind's eye, seen his baptism. We have heard of the voice of God. And now let us taste of God through the Holy Spirit. I invite you in a moment to wherever you are, put yourself sitting still and sitting comfortably. Put your hands open before you in a gesture of receiving and acceptance and prayerfully say, yes, Jesus, I turn to you and I receive from you your Holy Spirit. I'm going to play some music with some pictures in the background and allow the words and the music, but more especially God through his spirit to minister to us wherever we may are, wherever we find ourselves, not just in place where it's at home or whatever, but in circumstance and in the sense of how we're feeling before God and in ourselves. Because that's what the epiphany is all about, that we have not just seen who Jesus is, but we say yes and respond to him. So let us now respond.
we will cast our prayer, our burdens in prayer on, upon Jesus and upon his throne. But just before that, we affirm and acknowledge what, who Jesus is and all that he has been and is for us. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now we yield and ask uh, to God in prayer as we lay our concerns before him. Thank you to Elsie for leading us in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace, you call us to pray with open and hopeful hearts. Trusting in you, we come together in prayer for the needs of our world, our community, and ourselves. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for the Church throughout the world and here in Ireland. Give steadfast faith to all Christians baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help them and us to remain strong and to continue to grow in the Spirit by coming to you in prayer, by reading our, the, your word and attending regular teaching of your word. Strengthen us with the gifts of your Spirit to bear one another's burdens and to show your love towards those around us who don't believe the message of your saving grace. We pray for Bishop Andrew, Reverend Adam, and the clergy in our diocese. Help us not to take for granted those who lead and serve us, but to support them practically and to pray for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit daily as they work to further your kingdom. Lord, today, as we celebrate the baptism of Christ, may we quietly reflect on our own baptismal vows. Create a willingness in our hearts to express a fresh commitment to follow you faithfully and to participate more fully in the life of your church. As your baptized children, help us to be open and honest before God, seeking repentance from those things that can hold the Holy Spirit back in making us living witnesses to the love of Jesus. Fill us with boldness and joy to proclaim your salvation and open our eyes and to recognize the potential and the power of the Holy Spirit to work even in the hardest of hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, at the beginning of another year, we acknowledge once more that everything in our world was made by you, and we are instructed by you to respect and care for all you have created. We remember the countries in our world where there is war or conflict, and pray that you will look mercifully upon the sufferings of the people involved. Look with compassion upon those in our world who live with injustice, fear, hatred, hunger, and oppression. We pray for our brothers and sisters across the world who are striving for justice in the face of oppression, for the leaders and elected officials of our world, for the wisdom to enable them to discern between good and evil and to strive for unity in places of division and for peace where war and violence continues to have a devastating effect on the lives of innocent people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer adapted from Mother's Union prayer resources as we continue to live with the COVID-19 pandemic. Loving Lord, we pray for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. Through our prayers, we invite you, Lord, to show us some practical ways that we can show your love and compassion 
to those around us at this time. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions and pray for those in positions of influence locally, nationally and internationally, including those in our own government. We pray for all who work at every level in our health system as they work under extreme pressure and for all essential workers who keep their country running in these difficult days. We pray for those who are suffering with COVID-19 and for all who care for them, especially those in our intensive care units. We pray in particular for the, manage, the staff and management in Letterkenny Hospital and in our local community hospitals, in our primary care centres and those in our community who work on the front line. And we pray in particular for those in our own parish who also work on the front line. For Dr. John Sheeran, Alma Morrow, Ethna Dunyan, and Elsie Stewart. We pray for your protection of the elderly and vulnerable in our community, not to succumb to the risks of the virus. We pray for misinformation around the COVID-19 virus and around the vaccine to be curbed so that fear may not take hold in people's hearts and minds. We pray for those known to us who are at ill at this time and for their families. And in our prayers this week, we particularly remember John Tinney and Reverend Claire Henderson. Lord, we ask you to guide us to exercise the good sense that you in your mercy provide. May we approach each day in faith and peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness towards us, and give thanks to God for his constant presence with us through every circumstance of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, thank you for the lives of all your faithful people whom you have redeemed through the precious blood of your dear Son and are now with you for all eternity. Grant that we may humbly follow in their footsteps, boldly trusting in your promises and faithfully living out your word. Lord, we pray for those mourning the death of a loved one, and we ask you to comfort them in their sorrow. Fill the emptiness of their hearts with the presence of your everlasting love, so that their lives may gradually be filled with the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Father God, you give each of us opportunities to live out your calling on our lives each and every day. As we step into another week, may we seek new opportunities to do your will. Help us, by the power of your Holy Spirit, indwelling in us, to show Christ's love and compassion to our families, neighbours, co-workers, and even to the stranger we encounter day by day. We ask this and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We conclude our prayers in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, kingdom thy kingdom come. come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, they our are daily, daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us and not into temptation. Us Deliver us from, us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. 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 Our final hymn, song this day, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb.
So we now yield to God as we go into the week, yield ourselves to God. Let us say together, be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives, as well as our worship, be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. May you have a peaceful and safe week as we go ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm now going to share with you just a few notices of what's coming up. Please do subscribe, link and follow our YouTube channel because the more who do so, the better and more secure the channel will be. They won't decide it's not being used enough. So if you search for Stranorder, I mean Glass, Cultivo Parishes, you'll find our YouTube channel. Please support us there. There are children activity sheets in the website and you can see the address there, stranorder.rafo.anglican.org. In a few weeks, would you believe it's Lent? We are hoping to do something based on P-R-A-Y, pray, a time together, and we'll do it online on Zoom. If you're interested in joining, please let us know through Facebook, through the contacts on the website, I mentioned that as well, and you'll also find the email for contacting us also on the website. We hope you'll be able to join us on that as well. So let me again wish you a good week, keep well, keep safe and God bless.